All right. Uh, I guess we can probably get started. Um, we can jump into Alexander's topic. And uh, anyone else, please feel free to continue adding items if you have them. Uh, otherwise, it may be a shorter call today. All right. So um, we had some questions about arm support. So I took a, a quick stab at it. Um, and essentially, um, I think we have two options. Um, Right now we are using, um, I want to say, uh, Docker image. The there's there's a um, a module you can import to like push images to uh, container registries, and there's like the old mechanism which is what we're using, and that does not support you pushing to different architectures. Um, and there's a, a new module called OCI image, um, and that does support pushing to uh, different architectures. There's just a few other issues with that one. Uh, I haven't figured out how to pass in uh, arguments like the tag and the actual name of the repository. So I, I had to hard code that when I was testing it. Um, it, it seemed to allow one to push, you know, several architectures, uh, to the registry and it, it showed up properly in Quay, um, except that I, you know, when I, I did it, I didn't set it up correctly to actually compile the right, uh, architecture into the binaries. So it, it didn't quite work, but I, I think it could work. So that's option one and option two which I haven't explored fully yet, but what Qport appears to be doing is it creates um, the different architectures by pushing it to the registry with a like a dash arm and a dash AMD. And then it like takes both of those and sends it through Bilba, which allows you to push it without the extensions and it will give you uh, both R and uh, AMD in the same name. Mm. Um, so I, I'm not sure which one we should go with at this point. Uh, and I have those... to look into, so I didn't you know, explore it further. Does the OCI image built uh, Basil uh, plugin provide the same like container image names that the builder one provides? I wasn't, you were talking about extensions and like you mentioned, it seemed like a feature of the builder approach that you got it, this, so. I, I actually, I don't think it's an, a feature. I think it's a, it's a, a mechanism they use because they couldn't get, get it any other way to work from the mm -hmm. uh, old builder version. Because you okay. should be able to push to a to a registry and tell it this is the architecture. And then if you push another one with the same name but a different architecture, it will uh actually show up as a different architecture in the registry. So it seems we should talk to the uh the whichever kubevert developers <clears throat> put that support in to understand why they chose what they chose and if um, they were to do it again today, given the stuff that exists, would they still do it the way they did, or would they use the OCI image uh, so, Basil? So OCI image is relatively new, and and yeah. you need Basil six for it, so that might be why they went with the other option. That's my that's my guess. So if that's the case, then we should uh you know do the all the ideal approach and they can come back and adopt it if they choose to uh rather than us following kubevert in this case that would be my suggestion all right, all right. so we, we probably should make some time for this then because uh if we have to upgrade our basil to six and, and do some other things then yeah, let's first see. Let's first see if that's the the way that we should go based on like talking to the engineer who worked on the kubevert stuff. Right. That's my suggestion. Any other thoughts on it? Yeah, I was going to say maybe just make sure that there's not like a super good reason 
for keyboard to go with that other mechanism. Yep. And if if the answer is no, then we can do the great stuff with the OCI image. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure that we do it in, in such a way that we can support other arches as well, like, you know, S390 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have the pending PR. Yeah. Oh, the, the, the pending PR for the S390 is... It's actually not doing anything at all. Uh, we have a check somewhere that sort of like rejects if you send arches in that aren't ARM or AMD. And, and all that does is uh, disable that or, you know, let it pass that particular check. So other than that, it doesn't do anything. But we, we don't actually do anything for ARM at this point either. You know, we... We have a, a periodic that, that builds the ARM container, but. All right, <clears throat> sounds good. We've got another topic. I saw Jenny typing it in. So let me open up the associated issue. Yeah, so. Uh... We have this bug on the uh, AVS F6 uh, uh, cluster. We see that uh, when we create several snapshots and several restores, and then we delete the VM snapshot, the volume snapshots are stain, and we cannot delete them, mm. as well as the volume snapshot contents are stain. And um, but when we, but it only happens in this like complicated this complicated scenario when we have several snapshots and several restores, because like when we create just one snapshot, one restore, everything works fine and it cleans up. Mm -hmm. And so, like uh, there's a email thread where we like try and understand if it's a, a CNV bug or a FSX bug. So. Okay. Uh, I mean, can you manually remove the volume snapshots if you like OC, no. OC delete? If you can't no. remove them, then it seems like it's probably a, uh, well, it, I'd be curious what the message you get from the system when you try to do that. Or maybe like, it just marks them in terminating or something and they just never go it, away. It says uh, it it says it says deleted, but it no, it does not return. Uh, like it it says deleted, and then it's stuck. Mm -hmm. I cannot so push another. Probably a point on it. Yeah. Almost almost if you delete it, and you know it sort of like looks like it's stuck. There's always a sort of finalizer on it. So from my experience, there's uh, there's some finalizer removal issues in the uh, external snapshotter sidecar. So if you give it like fifteen minutes, I'm interested if it if it cleans up eventually. They're trying to orchestrate like PVC and snapshot removals, and sometimes it just messes up. So if you give it like fifteen minutes, it'll requeue enough times. I think like it it took it took a while to lock this bug and um, like I, I don't know how much time exactly but uh, I think it's been there for more than an hour maybe two hours even but you know like I can try I can try one more time to measure it. Is the and, system where this was reproduced still uh, available? Like, could you check now to see if those things are cleaned or is there some kind of forceful removal that, or like a recreation of the environment? Yeah, it, 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 like, the envi environment was destroyed, but I have another cluster, I can uh, reproduce it. Okay, it would be interesting to see. I think that's a good avenue to check. Like I know it takes a little time it may not be acceptable either, but um, like to leave it like this, we'd probably want this issue fixed, but um, maybe even Alex, if you had some uh, some ideas on um, maybe logs to watch, like I don't know if there's a you know particular 
yeah, lo uh, pod log or something that you would uh, collect. Yeah, there's a couple. To... Yeah, but I, I think I'll have to get access to this cluster. Okay, so maybe that's a good way to um, proceed then is to recreate it, uh, engage Alex, um, collect some additional data, because if we have to go, uh, it sounds like we may need to drive this outside. I mean, it doesn't seem like it would be a, a cubevert issue because we're just manipulating Kubernetes resources and they're not doing what we expect them to do. Yeah. Yeah, and and also like Robin uh, uh, looked at the node, like he with uh, he connected the node with with the C debug, and he saw uh, that this um, stack volume snapshots that they are they were marked offline once we deleted the source VM. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> like. This info is uh, in the doc uh, in, in down, 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 this bug. Yeah, he created a doc, so. Okay. Yeah, so I think, yeah, it sounds like what Alex is saying sounds like a pretty good theory because uh, it seems like maybe even the storage driver is doing what it needs to do um, and the snapshots are becoming offline, but um, the objects aren't able to be cleaned up. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks for bringing it up. I think we have an action plan on mm -hmm. that one. Yeah, thank you. All right, any other topics that people would like to discuss today? We have some issues on GitHub that we may want to look at. Okay. Um, anyone want to throw one out that we should start at? I'm trying to think of. How about the apply custom labels to CDI pods? Okay. I just I'll put a comment on here. Um, so we, we have the ability to add labels and stuff to data volumes, which they then get uh, passed down to the importer pods. But this person wants to put these labels uh, to the operator or the, CRD, uh, the CR and have mm -hmm. those all uh, propagated through all the components. So I, I guess a custom label in CDI, I, I asked them, you know, it's been a couple of weeks and I just noticed nobody yeah. did anything. So I just- We need uh, to we need to understand the use case because actually lumping the importer and the upload proxy are two different, you know, like I could see importer, it's associated, it's a workload associated with a particular data volume and it's dynamic, but the upload proxy is a static CDI resource that already has labels that you could select, uh, presumably, I would guess. So yeah, I think that was the right thing to ask about I'm, the- I'm, I'm guessing they want to just label the entire application so they can monitor it or something. That, that's my my guess, but we already have, you know, a bigger label for that. So maybe they have a specific label they want to look at or something i don't know yeah yeah because like in general yeah it's important to understand the use case here i guess the problem that's trying to be solved otherwise it's kind of yeah it, it seems like something i wouldn't necessarily want to do have is like arbitrary uh apply these labels uh type of logic but i don't know let's see what they want to do well, we, we, we have a, a function where we say, you know, add all these labels to all the components. So if mm -hmm. the CR has a list of labels that we want to add, we could, you know, put it through that function. And you know, it's not very hard from a technical perspective. I just want to know why are we doing it? So. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Sounds like we're in agreement there. Any other comments on this issue? Yeah, just note, I think you can't really pass labels from the data volume to the importer. It's just a defined set of uh, like three or four annotations that you could pass, like the STO, um, 
couple more that I can remember. But annotations, I think, labels are anything. Hmm. How I do we pass? Do we arbitrarily pass all labels? I don't think so. I have to check, though. I, I believe annotations is a particular list and labels is anything. Okay. If I remember right. All right, I guess we could confirm that for them. All right, uh, let's go back to the issue list. Um, what else should we discuss? I see this inconsistent behavior of a VM with uh, DV that with, marked as a bug. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, that, that's an issue in one of the tests in Kubert. Um, there's a PR to fix that already. So okay. Um, yeah, we need to try to find a prover, an approver for that. Yeah, our approver on vacation. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think last time we talked about the custom lifecycle hooks and, and they answered my question and they did not like my suggestion. So, so I don't know what we should do with that. Okay, they don't want to. Yeah, they they don't want to de deploy another control plane and add load for their use case. They just want us to absorb the technical debt of this into our software. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Uh, to be to be blunt about it, I guess. That's what I how I read that. Like, yeah, I don't really want to yeah. absorb this uh this technical complexity. Especially for a very um, short window in time, because mm -hmm. they they mentioned that one twenty eight or one twenty nine is already bringing this feature, um, like native handling of sidecars. Yep. And then we're basically done, so we'd be basically adding it for a release or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm not really interested. I wouldn't like, yeah, I don't think that it's necessarily worth following that much. And it's kind of like, yeah, it's a bit of an unfortunate um, integration pain for them with using two things together. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, not I'm not really interested in implementing this myself either. No, okay. So I guess the open source way of this is to leave it alone for the time being. Um, okay, anything else we should look at? What about this tar file with the relative links? Can't remember if I had a comment there or somebody else did. Cannot you time? All right, yeah. So I think I I suggested a way forward, which is a, a patch with those uh, tar command line options. I don't think we we are bothered by those. Just add them. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Do we care about the time or the metadata? I mean, I, I, that really surprises me that you can't, for a file that you're creating, you can't uh, set the time that it was modified on. Like, um, it's a similar Okay. So is that like trying to go outside of the PVC basically then? Like if you have something that uh, like the relative, 
like I'm just wondering which is what item it is. Oh, it's for dot. Yeah, it's because it's trying to change the. I think maybe just the. Um, I think maybe just the no overwrite dir option would be enough because I'm guessing it's trying to overwrite the dir and set the modified time to the current time or whatever. Um, and it can't do that either of those operations, but you should, if you're able to create a file, you should be able to set its modified time, I would guess. So this seems like it's only relevant for uh, overwritten files, which shouldn't be anything other than the, the top level directory. But they did not uh, come back since a month or something like that. So we probably ought to say like, uh, <clears throat> I think maybe a, a PR that adds the no overwrite there might be a good uh, a good thing to to put in. Okay. Just because um, it makes sense. Okay. Does anybody want to look at any other issues? If not, and we don't have any additional topics, we can make it a shorter call today. I think it's starting to get close to the year end uh, PTOs and things for some of us. The last call for agenda items. All right, seeing none, we can end early. Thanks everybody for joining and we'll see you at the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.